Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 6. And if you want to download this workbook 135 chapter 00, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet order and we got to talk about one simple topic in this video. Simple, yet probably the most important topic in math. What's the answer to this? 2 plus 2 times 3. Is it 12 or 8? Now, when I do this in the classroom, you know, I do have everyone raise their hands, and you know, we get uh, some people voting for each one. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> if half the class thinks it's 12 and half class thinks it's 8, then no one would be in agreement in the world about math. So there's something called the order of operations. But here's a cool thing. We can prove it. Excel does not make math or logic errors. So let's just type it in. Now we're going to violate our rule here just because we're looking at the uh, order of operations here. But 2 plus 2 times 3. All right, quick, you still have time to change your answer. Is it 8 or 12? All right, raise your hand if you think it's 12. All right, I'm raising my hand. Raise your hand if it's 8. I'm raising my hand again. I get to vote twice. All right, it's 8. And here's the reason why is we have to do multiplication before addition. So it's not 2 plus 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. It's 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2, right? And we have to have uh, the agreement of how to uh, do our calculations and in what order, or everyone will get different answers. Now let's just look. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Here's our order of operations. First, do everything in parentheses. Then do all exponents. We'll learn about exponents. Uh, third, do all multiplication and division, left to right. Fourth, do all adding and subtracting, left to right. I always think of it like this. I just have my little list in my head, right? And these are the symbols that we use in Excel. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, plus and minus. Now, let's take a look here. What if you really wanted to add first? Then you must use parentheses like this. Oh, that's how. That's when we get to use parentheses. So really, our goal is to add. So equals, in parentheses, 2 plus 2, close parentheses, times 3. Now in our chapters on finance math, uh, you know some of the where we figure out things like what your savings account is going to be worth in 10 years or what your pension is going to be worth in 20 years. Uh, we'll have big long math expressions and parentheses will be very important. But here we're forcing it. It's going to be 4 because it'll do the addition first and then 4 times 3 is 12. Now I want to show you a trick here. And this will help in two ways. It will help us see exactly how Excel calculates a given formula. And also later when you're making bigger formulas, this is a cool trick for tracking down what part of the formula is causing the error. Let's go up to formulas. And then there it is, formulas in the formula auditing group. There is, mine isn't, I'm going to scoot this over here. So there you can see it, evaluate formula. So I'm going to click evaluate formula. And watch this. In slow motion, as you click evaluate or enter, it'll underline each part that it's calculating. So here you can see it's calculating 2 times 3. I hit enter or evaluate. Uh, and now it adds right 8. I'm going to click Escape. Come down here, Formula Evaluator. Again, I can see it's underline exactly the proper thing to calculate in accordance with the order of operations. Parentheses first, boom. Oops, enter. And that gives us a 4. And then 4 times 3 is, finally, it gets rid of the parentheses and 12. All right, that's a pretty cool little thing there. All right, remember, this is equal to 12. This is equal to 8. Here's a real life uh, example. And actually, I got asked by this from someone doing accounting up in one of the buildings at Highline. They were like, oh, Excel is not working. It's not calculating correctly. So they sent me the workbook. And it wasn't that Excel was calculating correctly. It's that they didn't know the order of operations. All right, And so here's what they did. They said, oh, and the setup was, you say you had 10 items at the beginning of the month. There's three 
at the end of the month. That means the difference between these seven is what we sold. And then you, we paid $5 each for them. So the expense called cost of goods sold that goes on the income statement would be 7 times 5. And so this is what this person did. Right? So 10 minus 3 times 5. And of course, as we know, that is not going to give us the right answer. In fact, let's do our formula evaluator. There it is right there when I have it small. And so it goes B28, because we have cell references. It tells you what's in that, and then what's in C28. All right, and now it's got to find out what's in D28. So now it's going to multiply 3 times 5. Because multiplication comes first. There's no parentheses, and then 10 minus 5 is minus 5. All right, so the correct calculation for this cost of goods sold is, sure enough, do the subtraction first, but put it in parentheses. So 10 minus 3 is 7, close parentheses, times 5. All right, uh, just a short note about order of operations. Uh, and it will be important through the rest of the class. All right, we'll see you next video. Next video, we'll, talk, we'll look at some other functions besides the sum function. See you next video.